All right, today's video is another ham radio kit assembly. This time the Elecraft PX3 high performance pan adapter I'm going to put together for my friend Jerry. The first step is to take an inventory of all the parts. Uh, there's an inventory uh, list in the manual and we we'll just go through and check off that we have all the parts. The case assembly, the front bezel, the two circuit boards, and all of the necessary hardware to assemble the kit. Anytime you're assembling some electronics like this, you want to take care to follow good uh, ESD safety precautions. Either use an, an anti-static uh, mat, or in my case I'm using a grounded bench, and I rest my arms on the metal edge of the bench and that keeps everything nice and clean and static free. The first step in the assembly is to install four spacers on the main board here. Now this main board has got a rubber band that's holding the display to the board itself and you want to leave that rubber band in place until the instructions tell you to remove it. Each spacer is installed with a 2-56 machine screw, the spacer itself, and two lock washers. I slip one of the lock washers on the screw itself. I'm going to slip the screw through the hole in the circuit board. And with that through there, slip another lock washer over the top of the screw and then screw the spacer on. After snugging that spacer with a screwdriver, just repeat that for the other four locations on the main panel. Okay, I'm getting the uh, last one installed here. We'll just turn the board over and tighten that up with the screwdriver. But the next step is to grab the front panel here and on the back are the four mounting holes for that main board are located here. There's some conductive tape that's located over those holes and instructions say to essentially clear the holes out. Don't remove the tape but simply clear the holes of the tape and this can be done with a small uh, hobby knife or I actually used a, um, a little drill bit here and ran it in here and just spun it actually backwards uh, so I wouldn't tear the tape but basically just score it around the edges of the hole and then use tweezers to pick out the, uh, the little pieces that were left and that cleared the holes pretty nicely. The next step is to install this small nylon spacer through the back of the board uh, through this hole right here. So what we do is carefully remove the rubber band that's holding the LCD panel to the display and uh, lay this down on the bench carefully and uh, very gingerly kind of fold the front panel out of the way and let it rest on the bench. And the reason we're doing this is uh, there's a flex cable right here that attaches the LCD panel to the board and you want to be careful that you don't put any stress on that. So we'll let this sit right here and then we can put that screw through in place. Okay. So we'll slip the screw through the hole I'll hold that in place with my thumb and then reach around here and uh, thread the spacer on the other side. Now when tightening this one up you just want to make it snug because it's a nylon spacer and you don't want to strip the threads out. And now we can bring the display back up into kind of the rubber housing here between the buttons and, uh, and then remove the protective film on the front of the display. So we can remove the film uh, using the little sticker that's here and uh, very carefully remove the film and peel it off of the front of the display. Now you want to just inspect to be sure that there's no dirt and dust uh, on the panel. Try not to touch it with your fingers and, and keep it nice and clean. Okay, the next step is to take the main panel board and insert it into the front housing. Uh, hold the board horizontally like this so that the LCD doesn't uh, become dislodged. And you may have to angle this slightly and uh, slip it in place. So I put two screws in diagonally opposite corners of the front plastic bezel. We'll rest that in place and tighten those screws down and then add the other two screws. Now with all four screws started, we'll snug each of those down but just do them gingerly. You don't want to distort or crack the front plastic lens. After you've got all four screws tightened up, just inspect it to ensure that you haven't trapped any dirt underneath the lens. If so, now's the time to uh, pull it apart and clean it carefully and uh, put it back together. And next, it's time to install the knob. So just uh, align the, uh, the D-shaped insert with the knob itself. 
and push it in place. So next the power supply board goes in and that uh, mounts to these pins here and gets secured to the nylon post we installed earlier. Just carefully align the connector to the header pins and it helps to kind of push and rock this in place until it goes all the way in. With the power supply board fully seated, uh, secured in place with the, the final 2-56 screw. So now's a good time to decide how you want the front panel power switch to behave. If you mount the jumper in uh, position 3 and 4, uh, the front panel power switch will behave normally. Turn the power on and off by that switch. Uh, the other two positions in the middle and at the front will cause the power switch to either be inactive or to only allow you to turn the power off and the unit will power on when it uh, receives power from the, uh, the host radio. So next we take the left side panel and remove the tape that was applied to the back to expose bare metal around the mounting holes. And we do this in, uh, in four locations, uh, here, 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 and here. Okay, with those removed, we'll look at the front. Now the instructions say to remove a little bit of paint around these two holes, but uh, that's already been done on the unit that I have here. But also there are two more pieces of tape uh, here and here. And uh, the instructions don't say anything about that, but it uh, looks like that needs to be removed as well. Now we can take our prepared side panel. Uh, put it on the side of the unit here and install the two knurled nuts for the small uh, eighth inch jacks. Next we add the flat washer and hex nut on the DC power input connector. After carefully tightening the connectors we can then install the two 440 flathead screws to secure the side panel to the front panel. Next, we remove the masking tape from the four locations on the right side panel. And then attach the right side panel with the pair of 440 flathead Phillips head screws. And the next step is to mount uh, two of the rubber feet onto two of the uh, tilting front legs, like that. Next you take one of the plastic nylon screws and a metal washer and thread it into the leg as shown. And then you thread it all the way in place. With that nylon screw threaded all the way in place, you want to trim the end of the, of the screw to be flush with the inside of the leg. And that can be simply done with a, uh, a hobby knife. After unwrapping the bottom panel, we'll find there's also tape on the sides of these that masked off uh, you know, the sides during the painting process, we remove those as well. The two remaining rubber feet are mounted to the back panel into these two holes with the remaining nylon screws. Now, this is probably the easiest time to install the serial number label to the back of the panel. So at this point uh, we install the tilting feet into the side of the panel and uh, install that with a thumb screw. Don't tighten it at this time, but just get them uh, you know, secured in there so they won't fall out. Okay, for final assembly, I've loosely put in the remaining two thumb screws here, and we can slide these two halves together. Now with the halves in place, we can tighten up the, uh, the lower two thumb screws, and that will secure the case together. And then loosely tighten the, uh, the top two. This will uh, allow you to move these back feet so that you can position them for standing the unit up next to the radio. All right, with the assembly complete, let's give it the smoke test. We'll plug in power and uh, turn on the power switch. And it looks like it uh, boots up good. Now let's see, let's set the reference level up to a higher level so we can bring the noise floor up here. And we can see that uh, this does appear to be working. Now I don't have the radio here to test it with, but I think uh, this is enough to let us know that the unit is assembled correctly and is working. And we'll get this over to Jerry uh, so he can enjoy this with his KX3 Elecraft radio. Thanks again for watching.